In prime time, a Guam Police Department cop is placed on administrative leave after an officer involved shooting in Tamuning leaves one man dead. Plus, John Richard Bass III, the man accused of fatally stabbing a woman, pled not guilty by reason of mental illness. And lawmakers spend the day discussing a bill that aims to build a $1 billion medical center of excellence. Half a day and good evening, everyone. An off-duty police officer is under investigation by the Attorney General's office and has been placed on administrative leave after a fatal shooting in Tamuning Wednesday. With more on the story, here's Isaiah Uggen. Little details were provided during a joint press conference held Thursday morning by the AG's office and the Guam Police Department. Chief Prosecutor Basil O'Malley. At this time, all we can say is that there was an officer involved shooting. Chief Prosecutor Basil O'Malley also released a timeline of events. At 6 p.m., police responded to a shooting. At 6.20 p.m., the chief of police contacted the AG's office. Within 30 minutes, their investigations were activated, and by 7.45 p.m., they were on scene. The activation of the AG's office investigators, or what's called an independent investigative team, is part of a lethal force policy that's currently under development for law enforcement officers. Chief of Police Stephen Ignacio adds that aside from the IIT, an internal affairs investigation is underway. The officer involved in this uh, fatal shooting has been placed on administrative leave. Uh, I did reach out uh, early this morning uh, to Director Ike Pareto from the Guam Customs and Quarantine, and I did again request for the assistance of uh, his internal affairs investigators to work alongside and uh, take uh, the lead again, like they did with the, the last shooting uh, in the internal affairs investigation. GPD and the AG's office did not provide any additional information, for example, as to what led up to the shooting, what the officer was doing in the area, who called 911, or whether a duty gun was discharged. But a video circulated on social media and WhatsApp chat groups displaying a man standing out a white Mitsubishi, holding a gun and a radio hunched over a man lying on the road face down. AG leaving Camacho. In terms of facts, uh, we are working through interviewing witnesses. We've conducted some. And once we are able to provide more factual information, we'll, we'll do it as soon as we can. For now, though, the AG's office is asking for the community to come forward if they have a video of the incident or if they were a witness to what happened. What I'm asking from the, the general public and the news agencies, we know a lot of people have uh, videos and photos. And anyone who might have seen what happened last night, please contact our office. Uh, we, we know there are videos out there. We would like to get those videos and those photos. You can contact the office via email at info at oagguam.org or call 475-2580. Reporting for Guam's News Network, Guahu Siazia Ugin. Accused murderer John Richard Bass III has entered a not guilty plea by reason of mental illness. The 27-year-old appeared Wednesday before Magistrate Judge Jonathan Kwan. Bass is accused of stabbing his former girlfriend to death, 39-year-old Virginia Rose Pareto Laguana, and injuring a 19-year-old woman during an incident on June 7th at the Hotel Mayana in Tamuning. Bass was the subject of an extensive manhunt and was captured in Jigo the following day. Judge Kwan ordered that Bass undergo a psychiatric evaluation. Attorney William Jones has been assigned to the case, which will now go before presiding Superior Court Judge Alberto Lamarina. And another murder defendant, Matthew Manabusin, will be getting a second defense counsel. His recently appointed attorney, Jay Ariola, sought the addition, citing the seriousness of the offense and the right to a speedy trial. Ariola argued that under Guam law, a defendant charged with the first degree felony is entitled to more than one legal representation. The government disagreed, stating that the addition would be an exception to the rule. However, the court determined that the case calls for, quote, an extraordinary effort and, an, and assigned an additional attorney. Manabusin was indicted for the April deadly shooting of Joshua Menno, whose body was found along Swamp Road in Dededo. Jury selection is set for August 3rd. And accused sex offender Jason Asperer entered a guilty plea Thursday and was sentenced to five years in prison for third-degree criminal sexual conduct. He faced multiple counts for allegedly molesting a minor with disabilities and forcing the minor to do drugs. His previous convictions for first, third, and fourth degree criminal sexual conduct had been reversed on appeal. This term will run along with his sentence for other drug-related charges. And a woman was sentenced in district court after pleading guilty to allowing her husband, a convicted felon, access to her firearms. Tyler Matanani has the story. 
Verlaine Marie Terlahi Aponic was sentenced to 37 months in prison and three years of supervised release for pleading guilty to unlawful sale of firearms to a felon. Court documents state that in June of 2016, Aponic purchased three firearms and allowed her husband, Eric Aponic, to carry the guns into their home. Months later, law enforcement discovered that he was in possession and control of the defendant's firearms. It should be noted that Eric Aponic was convicted in October of 2006 for conspiracy to distribute methamphetamines and is prohibited from possessing a firearm by virtue of his felony conviction. Defense counsel Roland Matinonia argued that the gun purchases were made legally by Verlin Aponic and that she bought them for her personal use and safety with the intent to pass them down to her son as inheritance and not for her husband. However, assistant U.S. attorney Rosetta Sinicholas maintained that although the guns were stored in a safe, Verlin Aponic kept the keys on top of it, making it easily accessible to her husband as well as anyone in the house. Mantinonia called this a lapse of judgment. Mantinonia read the defendant's statements on her behalf saying, quote, I know what I have done is wrong and I can't make an excuse for my behavior. I take full responsibility for my actions. Chief Judge Francis Tidenko Gatewood addressed Aponic saying, quote, If you want to use a gun to keep yourself safe, the Second Amendment allows you to do that. But you have to do it safely. Unfortunately, you do not do it safely. You are not a responsible gun owner. Reporting for Guam's News Network, I'm Tyler Matsunani. Her husband, Eric Aponic's sentencing hearing was also to be held today. However, the court allowed a continuance after he complained of chest pains. A date has yet to be released. And senators continued their deep dive today on a bill to fund the construction of what may be the government of Guam's largest, most expensive project ever, a $1 billion medical center of excellence. Here's more. The center would house not only a new hospital, but also new facilities for public health and behavioral health and wellness. Senators' questions focused on financing for the project. Gita is heading up the financing task force. CEO Melanie Mendiola says the measure provides some financing flexibility. This bill um, encapsulates uh, financing that's broad enough and um, uh, to, to, do, to accomplish a lease lease back or a traditional uh, uh, lending type of instrument as well. Gita is also looking at a variety of sources to pay for the projected $1 billion cost. In addition to the $300 million in American Rescue Plan funds the governor has pledged, they were also told to look for other federal grant money. But because this campus encompasses several different agencies that have several different types of financing, we're trying to kind of stay fluid um, uh, as far as Wherever the grant financing is, Guam Behavioral Health and Wellness recently acquired a grant specific to building. If they can acquire another grant specific to building, that will always be free money, will always be our mm -hmm. first choice. Several senators pointed out that while the bill authorizes $35 million in annual debt service, Gita's estimate was that it will cost $60 million a year. Gita Public Finance Manager Tina Garcia. This was just a, if we did a lease back, similar to the structure we're doing today, this is what it'll cost. And the realization that we cannot afford to do this. So that's why the task financing task force was brought together to identify other ways to fund this. And so towards the end of the report, we are looking at working on other financing sources, grants, veterans affairs, education. The $35 million annual payments identified in the bill would come from earned income tax reimbursements. Two amendments were made to a measure to benefit prison inmates during this current legislative session. The bill was introduced by Vice Speaker Tina Munya Barnes. It would create a revolving fund for DOC inmates called the Enough Amalik for Inmates Fund to ultimately allow indigent clients to have access to adequate legal representation. As during the pandemic, visitation privileges were paused and communication was only permitted through the Paytel system. One of the amendments was to change the name to the inmate phone access. As for the second amendment? Is to put the word indigent in several different places uh, in front of inmates and detainees. And this is just to make sure that those who qualify were only those within the indigent population at DOC. 
Senators had an opportunity to ask questions to a panel, which included the Department of Corrections regarding the matter. DOC spokesman Major Anton Uggen. With this bill, I think it will work perfectly that anyone that, that calls the alternate public defender or the public defender or their court-appointed attorney, those numbers, we will work with those, uh, those agencies and identify which number will be free, basically, and then the bill would come back to DOC and we would use revenue from the, uh, the proceeds to pay for it. Ugin says the current cost for calls is 15 cents per minute. GDOE has been able to make some much-needed school repairs with the help of American Rescue Plan funding. Superintendent John Fernandez says this also means they'll be making adjustments to their budget request as they prepare for a hearing before the legislature. We actually were able to, um, to fund about $82.6 million um, that we had asked for in our, in our budget. Um, the predominant, um, you know, the, the, I guess the most significant amount was for um, capital improvement projects. Many of those that go unfunded um, every year. Another large amount will be used for classroom instructional materials. Fernandez says the new adjusted budget request is about $291 million. DOE's budget hearing is set for July 15th. Meanwhile, school year 2021-22 will be starting in a couple of days later than usual. The first day of class is now slated for August 12th. GDOE Superintendent Fernandez explains that the reason for the adjustment is to add two more professional development days for teachers and staff. To be able to adequately prepare and, you know, be refreshed on all the things that, that they need to be refreshed on entering this very critical year of return to face. The Education Board approved the delayed start. Teachers will report for their first day on August the 6th and will participate in professional development from August 9th through the 11th. Fernandez adds that GDOE will also be reinstating the mandatory school uniform policy this year. Stick around for more news. We'll be right back. Half a day. As we look ahead to a brighter tomorrow, Matson's commitment to Guam and Micronesia remains stronger than ever. While the world around us is ever changing, what remains unchanged is our commitment to you, our customers, and the island communities we serve. Shipping is what we do best, and serving our community is at the heart of everything we do. But we don't do it alone. This is why we support organizations that make caring for the people and the environment a top priority. We know that many count on Matson's lifeline services in the Pacific. And that's why we continue to work hard to ensure that our shipments remain on time all the time. Matson recently added another Aloha class vessel to our schedule. We now have two of Matson's largest and fastest ships serving Guam from the U.S. West Coast and Hawaii. With our new state-of-the-art vessels, we stand ready to support the region's economic recovery. Thank you for the privilege of serving you for the last 25 years. And you can count on Matson to be here for the next 25 years and beyond. While we've all been through a lot over the years, typhoons, earthquakes, and now COVID-19, we've been able to get through these together. For more than 80 years, Pavel's Insurance has been protecting your homes, your businesses, and the health of your family. We are here today, and we'll be here tomorrow. There are better days ahead. Tomorrow's a new day filled with hope and choices. The possibilities of what we can achieve together are limitless. Let's continue to work together to ensure a brighter tomorrow for all of us. With triple the beef, triple the cheese, and triple the bacon, I call this burger the perfect triple threat. But you can call it the triple bacon cheesy jack. My triple bacon cheesy jack combo, only at Jack in the Box. It's a special delivery to your inbox every week with your KUAM News Round program advisories and promotions sign up for the weekly KUAM digital digest today on KUAM.com welcome back one possible answer to Guam's shortage of medical specialists might be found in a new bill by Vice Speaker Tina Barnes she hosted a news conference have. today to announce the legislation but also to thank the Office of Insular Affairs education officials and regional leaders for support of aspiring medical students throughout the blue continent of Micronesia Guests included FSM President David Panuelo, Palau President Sarangal Whips Jr., and officials of the Western Interstate Commission for Higher Education, also known as WICHI. OIA provided funding to cover the memberships of Guam, the CNMI, and the FSM for the program, which provides scholarship support. 
Here's Bill Arthur Barnes. The PSEP, which is the Professional Student Exchange Program, will allow local students to get sponsorship from the government and private businesses here on Guam while they attain their education in 10 health fields, ranging from a medical degree to optometry to dentistry to veterinary medicine and so much more. Once they complete this, they are required to come back home and practice here on Guam. Barnes says she's aware of about 100 local students who are aspiring medical professionals who could benefit from the program. It could save them from 32000 to 130000 in tuition costs. The Department of Revenue and Taxation has announced that more than 1,400 tax refunds worth about $4 million will be paid this week. DRT is processing the payments at what may be a record pace this year. Speaking on the link, Rev and Tax Director Daphne Shimizu says her fiscal team compared refund payouts between now and this time last year. And we had, um, I believe that we had paid out as of last week um, just shy of 160 million, I believe, about 157 million or so dollars in, um, in refunds in this um, fiscal year. And so when we compare with 2020, we actually at that time had uh, in June 2020, as of that point, we paid only about um, 50, a little bit over 50 million. So we're really at like three times um, the amount of refunds in terms of, you know, payouts of refunds uh, this year um, when we compare to last year. And that's hugely exciting. She expects a drop in the refund amounts in the next few weeks as they start paying out April returns. Shimizu says that's because most returns filed during April typically are by taxpayers who owe money and aren't expecting refunds. It appears that fewer residents are making their way to the free village food distributions. There were more than 20 cars lining up this afternoon at the food commodities distribution in Aganya Heights. The village mayor's office, with help of AmeriCorps Guahan Sustainable Culture staff, gave out 300 boxes of fresh produce and bags of dry goods, such as canned fruit, beans, nuts, chicken in a can, and even mac and cheese. When the emergency food assistance program first started, Mayor Paul McDonald said that the, they always had to request additional food. He acknowledged that the program is very much needed across the island, but he has noticed the decrease. It started out at 75. You know, they ask us how many you think uh, would would be sufficient for a pickup, and we started off with 75, then 150, and then 200. We stayed at 200, and then we noticed uh, an increase. So we asked for 300, and uh, that, that's where we're at right now. It's needed, but uh, I think there's a decrease. There's going to be a decrease. We'll find out today. Another food commodities distribution is scheduled for Dededo constituents tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 12.30 p.m. Or while supplies last, it'll be held at the Guam Football Association parking lot. Well, they were looking to fill 400 positions, but after receiving double the amount of applications, the Education Department's federal programs was able to provide about 700 students with a summer internship. The Youth Employment Internship, internship Program is made possible through CARES Act funding. GDOE, along with the Department of Youth Affairs, is providing hundreds of students with an opportunity to earn an income and learn this summer. Senior State Program Officer with Federal Programs, Maria Blas. We didn't place everybody, but we did exceed the 400 um, positions. So now we just want to um, ensure that all the host agencies that have agreed to partner with us and for all the students that applied um, you know that they're going to be uh, getting this credit. They're just so eager to not only have face-to-face -face contact and learn things. What we've done is we've taken the work sites and the workplaces and we've turned those into an educational environment so that we can catch up on um, summer learning loss. The program got underway a week ago. Students are interning at various agencies to include the Department of Public Health, certain mayor's offices, the Department of Public Works, the Guam Environment Pro Environmental Protection Agency, the airport, and the port. The House has passed a resolution to create a committee to investigate the January 6th attack on the U.S. Capitol. Just two Republicans, Representatives Liz Cheney and Adam Kinzinger, voted to support the measure. Natalie Brand reports from Capitol Hill. They broke the glass. 
It's been nearly six months since lawmakers hid from attackers on the floor of the House. Now they voted to approve the formation of a select committee to investigate the deadly January 6th assault on the U.S. Capitol. I remember the terrifying banging on those doors. We will uncover the truth. Another measure to create a bipartisan panel resembling the 9-11 Commission failed in late May in the Senate due to lack of Republican support. House GOP leadership recommended a no vote on this latest bill, citing ongoing investigations from law enforcement and congressional committees. It appears as though this select committee is being done purely for political purposes. The family of fallen Capitol Police officer Brian Sicknick and other officers who were there that day were among those who had pleaded with lawmakers to form a commission. They and representatives of the Capitol and Metropolitan Police Departments were in the House chamber Wednesday. We must go forward. Under Speaker Pelosi's proposal, she would appoint eight members to the committee, and House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy would appoint five, though the Speaker has the power to veto his picks. In aid to the Speaker, says she is considering naming a Republican as one of her eight members, though so far she has not given any indication as to whom she'll pick. Natalie Brandt, CBS News, Capitol Hill. Sports is next. Don't go away. Your community calendar is brought to you by Taco Bell. Whether it's your first meal or your fourth meal, we've got you covered. Taco Bell, live moss. Summer is here, and at Cars Plus, we have the perfect Jeep for your summer adventures. Whether you're going off-road or just getting ready to hit the beach down south, make this the summer event you find your Jeep. Like the 2021 Jeep Wrangler or the 2021 Jeep Gladiator. Equipped with Guam's only lifetime powertrain warranty. Call us at 477-7807 or visit our website at carsplusguam.com to schedule a test drive today. Cars Plus, driven by you. You may ask yourself, what is a blue raspberry? Or a pink lemon? Or even a strawberry watermelon? But they taste so good in these Minute Maid slushies from McDonald's. Who cares? It's more than a drink. It's a McDonald's drink. KUAM Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. What's up, Guam? Dave Delgado here for KUAM Sports. Thanks for watching. I'll get to some futsal results in just a bit. But first off, some basketball footage from the Impact Basketball Camp over at the Jungle. Check it out. The fourth annual Impact Basketball Camp is just about wrapping up at the Jungle in Mingilao. Coach Jimmy Yee is happy to see the kids working on their game during the summer break. Hey, the main purpose was this one, it's just to make an impact with kids. You know, about leadership and just in life in general. And of course, hoops, man. Uh, the late Thompson, we talked about this, Coach Thompson. We, this was our, an idea that we talked about in the beginning and he said to do it. And from then on, fourth year in a row, and we're just grateful for all the parents and all the kids that supported the cause and just come out and have the kids come and play basketball. The second camp session will run July 5th through the 24th, Monday through Friday, from 8 to 10 in the morning and 10 to 12 in the afternoon at the St. Anthony Gym in Timon. The offseason is the most important part. And developing, yeah, the drills. Of, oh, you know what? The funny thing is all basic, right? It's basic fundamentals, but you just got to master it and repetition and repetition. And summer's a great time to do it. And I always tell the kids after camp is what's most important and what makes this camp successful is that you do these things on your own after the camps. 
and, and hopefully it continues on and they just do it every day. You just got to put in the work, the fundamentals, master the fundamentals and everything else will take care of itself. Limited spots are available for middle and high school boys and girls. I think a lot of the benefits you can get from this camp is being able to work on your game and improve over the summer with your skills. And you get to learn a lot from here and you also get to meet new people and have a lot of fun. This camp has helped me to understand that every player has a role on the court and I've learned the importance of teamwork and how working on your individual skills and then coming together as a team can really help improve your game. For more info, contact Coach Jimmy Yee at the Yee Impact at gmail.com or call 688-5996. We've just been trying to continue our hard work so that way for our next season that we do good. So Coach Jimmy's camp was really helpful because uh, last year we didn't have something like this for us. I think everybody here works the same amount. You know, everybody here works hard. Uh, some, some people go longer than others here, so uh, it's just all about what you want to do to get better. I think in order to have a good season next year, you're going to have to put in the work that you, so you can get your results. Now for some results from the 2021 Budweiser Men's Futsal League. Defending champions Bank of Guam Strikers got the win 8-4 over quality distributors at the Guam Sports Complex Gym. Guam Shipyard battled to a 5-5 draw with Napa Rovers. The sidekicks SC slipped past the wings 9-8. Friars Football Club edged Orange Crushers 7-6. And Moses defeated haagen 7-4. Bud Light Women's Futsal League results now. The Bank of Guam Lady Strikers defeated defending champions. Heavy hitters Nutrition Mission Heat 7-3. Quality Distributors got the win over Moses 16-2. Sidekicks SC defeated the Metro Pacific Inc. Islanders 10-1, and Guam Shipyard defeated the Southern Cobras 18-5. Well, that's going to do it for sports. Sports. We're back right after this. Sports is brought to you by Docomo Pacific. Better together. For the different beats of your life, we're here to keep you connected the way you want it. Plans made for you, by you. Build your own bundle with Link. Select the internet, entertainment, mobile, and home phone plans that fit your lifestyle. Pay for what you want, not for what you don't. Build your own bundle and save with Link. KUAM News, in partnership with the Guam Visitors Bureau, brings you the Guam Safe and WTTC Safe Travel Certified Program Showcase. Look out for this powerful symbol for visitors, island residents, and industry workers alike, as it represents establishments with a consistent global commitment to safety practices. Stamped with approval by the Guam Visitors Bureau and the World Travel Tourism Council. Every Monday on KUAM News, we'll feature a different local business who's taken the Safe Guam and